Now, here we go. Everybody's favorite, olive oil. In addition to fried food, olive oil is a bad substance. It is a bad substance for human consumption. Why did we get on the olive oil kick in the first place? Remember what started that? It was a Mediterranean diet, right? Researchers went around the Mediterranean and they saw that people who lived on the coast of the Mediterranean had significantly longer lifespans than people that lived inland. And they figured, well, it must be what they eat, so what do people in the Mediterranean coast eat? Because they live longer. That's the whole deal of the Mediterranean diet. You're supposed to live longer. Well, they eat fish, nuts, vegetables, cheese, whole wheat bread, red wine, and olive oil. Because of their inclusion of olive oil in the Mediterranean diet, because of the inclusion of olive oil in the Mediterranean diet, the world went crazy. The horse was out of the barn and the world went crazy for olive oil. It didn't hurt that Dr. Oz said it's a great thing to eat. Uh, it didn't hurt that the olive oil industry said it's a great thing to eat. Everybody took that ball and ran with it and nobody studied the data except my colleague Dr. Wallach. Nobody took into consideration the Sardinian variable. Now here's a map of the Mediterranean. <clears throat> you see there's Spain and Gibraltar and North Africa. And way over in the right hand corner is Italy and there's a little island off the northwest coast of Italy right there called Sardinia. Now as far as longevity is concerned, the Sardinians were the longest lived people in the Mediterranean by another five years. They lived five years longer than the people on the coast who followed the Mediterranean diet. The only difference between the Sardinian diet and the diet of the people who lived on the coast is the Sardinians hated olive oil. This is one of the reasons why the term greaser came into <clears throat> consideration as a derogatory term for Italians because the Sardinians called everybody else besides them you know greasers because they ate olive oil they drank olive oil they used olive oil the Sardinians did not but when the people did the Mediterranean diet study they neglected the Sardinian variable either by choice or just because of incompetence they didn't take it into consideration. So the Mediterranean diet will extend your lifespan five, five years more or less from the way that people in mainland Europe eat. But if you want to get another five years, you cut out olive oil. It's an interesting thing to think about. And really, the evolution of olive oil into popular culture has more to do with the food industry than it does with anything else. <clears throat> it became reality by consensus. Everybody agreed that olive oil was a really good thing and it stuck, even though, quite frankly, it was incorrect. I don't want to say it's a lie, but it was incorrect. Well, so what's the deal with olive oil anyway? I mean, why is it so bad? Well, olive oil <clears throat> causes oxidative damage. Oxidative damage is everywhere all the time. Oxidative damage is a fact of life. Oxidative damage happens everywhere all of the time. Iron turns to rust because of oxidative damage. People get old and die because of oxidative damage. Fruit goes bad. Vegetables go bad. Food goes bad because of oxidative damage. Oxidative damage is everywhere all of the time. And when oxidative damage happens inside the body, it's not pretty. Oxidative damage is linked to high blood pressure. It's linked to all kinds of pain in the body. It's linked to all kinds of arthritis. It's linked to all kinds of heart disease. It's linked to, you know, you get liver spots on your face, on your skin. 
It's got nothing to do with the health of your liver. It's oxidative damage to the oil, the fat in your skin. Your, it's rancid fat in your skin. It's caused by oxidative damage. Cancer, caused by oxidative damage. Oxidative damage is everywhere all the time. It is a big bad voodoo daddy. And anything that you can do to decrease your body's exposure to oxidative stress, oxidative damage would be a very smart thing to do. And herein lies our conversation about olive oil. Because check it out. Oxidative damage is caused by oxygen atoms that have lost an electron. When oxygen atoms lose an electron, they become very sticky. And they stick to whatever they can. When something is stuck to by an oxygen atom, it becomes oxidized. When it becomes oxidized, your it becomes broken and destroyed. Oxygen atoms stick to tissue in the body. That tissue becomes oxidized. When the tissue becomes oxidized, it's on the way out. The 10 bad foods all contribute to oxidative stress. They all do. Fried food and oil in a bottle are the greatest contributors of oxidative stress to the human body. You know, other things like crap in the food, crap in the air, crap in the water, right? Automobile pollution, automobile exhaust, secondhand smoke, ionizing radiation, ultraviolet radiation, too much. All of these things cause oxidative damage. And there's not a whole lot you can do about those things, you know, except move to the country and live in a bubble. Nobody's going to do that. But you can do a great deal about the food sources of oxidative stress. And this is why this is such a very, very important thing for people to know, for people to understand, for people to get. <clears throat> so the 10 bad foods contribute to oxidative damage. Fried food and olive oil being the biggest culprits. The body also has an internal fire department, right? The body has a police department, which is the immune system. It kills things. The body also has a fire department. It puts out the fires of oxidative damage. It puts out the fires of inflammation caused by oxidative damage. These substances are referred to as antioxidants. This is why, on the other side of the coin in these health webinars, when we talk about medical nutrition, we're not talking about medical nutrition tonight. We're talking about foods to avoid. We're not talking about what to put into the body. We're talking about what to remove from the body, what to not let into the body. Antioxidants, which I've done an entire webinar on. I've done an entire 45-minute webinar just on antioxidants, are one of the keys to health. 90 essential nutrients, antioxidants, eliminate the 10 bad foods. When you do these three things, take the 90 essential nutrients into your body appropriate for body weight, take antioxidants in the proper amounts, and eliminate the 10 bad foods, you are going to live a long and happy, and well, I don't know if you'll be happy, you're going to live a long and healthy life. Now here's the deal with olive oil. <clears throat> you see in that bottle, it's a bottle of olive oil, you've got the bottle, you've got the cap, you've got the olive oil, and then you've got this stuff at the top of the bottle. Well, what is that? That's air. <laughs> what does air have in it? Oxygen. What does oxygen do? It oxidizes things. So olive oil oxidizes with time. You have no idea how long it's been sitting on the shelf. You have no idea how long it was in the truck. You have no idea how long it was sitting at the distribution center before it got on the truck, before it got into the supermarket. By the time you open the top of that bottle, it could be completely oxidized. And regretfully, there's no real down and dirty easy way to measure how much oxidation has happened in the oil. So to err on the side of caution, we say, 
don't eat it. Don't use it. Follow the Sardinians, not the olive oil industry. Now look, oxidation is all about time. If you're just hooked on olive oil and you can't imagine a life without olive oil, if olive oil is your thing and you, you just have to have it, then I want you to grow an olive tree in your backyard, grow an olive tree in your kitchen, and every time you want olive oil, you pluck the olives off of the tree, you put them in some type of a press and squeeze the oil out of them and eat it immediately, but don't heat with it. Because when you heat with any oil, yes, this includes coconut oil, this includes any oil, it oxidizes. It oxidizes rapidly when you heat it. This is why frying food is a bad thing. Now you can cook anything you want in a fry pan if you use lard or butter. Technically frying is cooking stuff in a superheated oil. We don't like oil for cooking. We hate it. Don't even want to look at it. But we're okay with butter or lard. Isn't that interesting? It's exactly the opposite of what you've been taught. And by the way, what you've been taught, how's that working for you? How's your health? You getting better every year? You getting healthier every year? Have you plateaued out and you're feeling good? Is that what's happening? Or are you getting worse? Autism has risen from 1 in 20,000, 1 in 10,000, to 1 in 80. Alzheimer's is now the sixth leading cause of death. It came out of nowhere. Heart disease rates unchanged. Cancer rates unchanged. Chronic disease on the rise. Life expectancy going down. Why? Because we've taken advice from the wrong people about what to do for health. Period. Your MD is the last person to go to for advice about health care. If you've got a bleeding artery or a broken bone or a nasty parasite, they're exactly the person you want to see. But if you want to optimize the structure and function of the human body, you need to visit a naturopath who has a clue. Gee, I, I wonder where you could find somebody like that. Now, if you don't follow this advice, if you use olive oil that's in a bottle, you're going to be pouring free radicals into the body, which are going to oxidize tissues in the body. It's only a matter of time before you die. But remember, before you die, you're going to suffer. You're going to lose all your money to the MDs with their ineffective, nonsense, ridiculous, archaic, dangerous treatments. And then you're going to die. I mean, death is inevitable. Suffering is optional. You tune your car up, you make sure it has all the right fluids, you wouldn't put diesel fuel in an unleaded engine, but you eat whatever you want and you drink whatever you want with feeling that you're Superman or Superwoman, and honestly, it's not your fault. It's your doctor's fault. Your doctor's the person that's supposed to be in charge of your health, but they have dropped the ball follow our advice, you stand a very good chance of living long and prospering.